Hi guys, how are you doing today? Did you miss Ask a Lawyer stories? I have two new ones for you today. Let's go to the first one about OP's parents who are threatening to disown OP if she won't get married or engaged in a year. How crazy is that? Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. We recently had a family dinner at my parents' house. Almost everyone invited came, and it turned out to be a bigger party than expected. Partly because this time it was special. It was in celebration of one of my younger sister's engagement, and also one of my cousin's recent baby announcement. So naturally the conversation geared towards marriage and relationships. I became the center of the topic because out of the entire family, aside from my youngest cousin, niece and nephews, I am the only one who is not married or engaged and does not have a significant other. I was constantly bombarded with questions. When are you getting married? When will I have a new boyfriend, etc. Unsolicited advice. I should start changing my fashion to look more appealing, etc. And one even asked if I was a closet lesbian. I'm neither gay or lesbian, but I might be an AS or a romantic. I'm not entirely sure and haven't delved further to know more. Anyway, in frustration from all the unnecessary personal questions, I mentioned out loud that I don't plan on getting married anytime soon, perhaps in a long time. So I wanted everyone to respect my decision. That was when all hell broke loose, my parents especially. My siblings and other members of the family made fun of me, told me that I'm just going to be one of those miserable cat ladies. Or how will I expect someone to look after me once I'm old and frail, if I will not have neither a significant other or children? My dad yelled at me for making my mother cry out of embarrassment. He exclaimed that it is a duty for everyone in the family to get married, to contribute in expanding the family that I shouldn't disappoint or embarrass him and the entire family because of my stubbornness or selfishness. At the end of the outburst, he said he'd disown me if I don't get married or engaged within a year. I left dinner at that point and cried on my way home. I was so upset that no one in the family was on my side or even considered respecting my decision. It's been almost two weeks since the dinner and my parents still haven't talked to me. Not that I really want to though. Normally, they'd text to see if I'd be able to visit over the weekend, but there was none of that. My other younger sister mentioned that they are still angry, but if I apologized, she thinks they will forgive me. My brothers and other male cousins would send Craigslist posts of guys seeking dates or suggest me to sign up for Tinder, etc. I don't want to apologize to my parents and my family for insulting me, but I'm from a culture and was raised as that values family more than anything so I'm admittedly afraid of cutting ties with them, especially my parents. But I don't believe at all that I will be able to grant my parents' wishes, at least currently. I might change my mind. I might not be an AS, a romantic after all. But I'm in no rush and certainly don't want to be pressured. Even now, after all this mess, I have no interest in being in a relationship anytime soon. Marriage is even out of the question. Is there a way to resolve this without me having to apologize? Are my parents and family members being unreasonable? Or am I just being too selfish? Edit. I just want to say thank you to everyone for the overwhelming response and support. I've always known my parents and family to be jerkish at times, but because they were my family, I think I've turned a blind eye to it. Some people mention that it's impossible to find someone and marry in a year. I believe that too but I feel my dad thinks it's possible because it actually happened with one of my brothers. He met someone, dated for about five months, and are now happily married. I just hope my dad will understand that it doesn't apply to everyone, especially if I'm not interested at the moment in it. I don't intend to apologize, but will try to reach out to my parents. My parents are still giving the silent treatment, but I did tell my stupid brothers and other siblings to stop sending unsolicited dating suggestions. As others suggested, I'll refrain from reaching out to my parents too much and we'll see how far this no contact will go. My God, OP's family is a real piece of work. They'll disown OP if she is not married or engaged within a year. In my opinion, a year isn't even long enough to know if you want to be with someone for the rest of your life so I guess they'd rather OP be married and miserable than single and happy. 
They obviously have zero respect for OP. And to be candid, I wouldn't associate myself with people like that, family or not. And if OP apologizes, this will confirm to them that they were right and that OP was wrong. Some background. My ex-girlfriend, Emma, 26, and I, 26 male, were together for nine years. We got together when we were 13 and broke things off when we were 22. We were friends since first grade. We grew up together. Our families became quite close, and our friendship circles were always intertwined at some point or another. This will be important later. We drifted in different directions as we got older, and we realized what we wanted from our relationships were ultimately different. We no longer had romantic feelings for one another, so we decided we would be better off as friends. We were best friends anyway. There hasn't been anything romantic since we broke up, nothing of a romantic nature either. A quick hug here and there to say goodbye at most. I truly haven't felt that way about her since things ended, and she's the same. The breakup was very amicable. Now, the issue. My fiancé, Sarah, 24, and I have been together for almost three years. I proposed a few days ago, and we are set to be married this year. I was so happy when she said yes. Our relationship has been great. Amazing communication, always smiling together, it's been wonderful. She knew about my past with Emma, as I was very upfront with her about it when we first began dating, as Emma and I are still friends. Our families still get together for sporting events, have parties and hang out together all the time. My parents are really close to hers, and our siblings, 22 male, 25 female, 17 female, 18 female, and 19 male are good friends too. They are all really close. They even have a weekly pizza night. We also have a few common friends. I didn't want Sarah to feel uncomfortable at any point, so I tried really hard to let her know everything I could and take the right steps to show her she is my number one. I would always include her in family events, make sure my family would spend time with her, and have even tried to create our own rituals together. I adore this girl. I think she is incredible, and from the day I met her, I have been head over heels. She hasn't voiced a single problem to me about any of this until today. She would even encourage me to invite Emma over to get-togethers we have hosted, or along to movies or dinner with our other friends. I was under the impression Sarah really liked her, especially considering the extra effort she would make to include her. Sarah and Emma have always gotten along, and they haven't been anything but nice to one another. I thought they were friends. She told me today, after taking time to think about it, that our friendship is weird and shouldn't continue. She gave me an ultimatum, to end our friendship or she will end the relationship. She said she feels disrespected I would even consider keeping someone I had a relationship with in my life. I couldn't get a single word in before she left. She's staying with a friend tonight. I don't understand how any of this could happen. She seemed happy. This is meant to be a positive time in our relationship. She said nothing has happened between her, Emma, or our families. I don't know what to do. She has been blowing up my phone with texts, and I don't know what to say. I thought I did everything right. Emma and I are still friends, not overly close though, but definitely don't cross any kind of boundaries together. We don't speak about anything inappropriate or do anything we should not. She is also in a relationship at the moment. We don't talk every day and don't see each other one-on-one -on -one or very frequently. Sarah has also mentioned that she is uncomfortable with our family spending time together after we have broken up and wants me to put an end to that behavior as well. I can't control what my family does, who they see, or who they are friends with. They have been nothing but kind to Sarah. They make a real effort to make her feel special and even include her as family. I don't know what to do. Is my friendship wrong? Should I talk to our families? Or is this ultimatum unfair? Edit. I just want to mention, because I have gotten a few comments about it, that Emma and I are no longer close. I see her at events she is also invited to, or when Sarah invites her along with us and our friends to do something. I don't actively seek her out for one-on-one -on -one time or invite her places myself. I don't even message her or text her. She's in a relationship too. Our families are close, Parents are best friends and our siblings grew up together. They even still have sleepovers. 
That means I'll see her places or run into her. That is really hard to avoid, but I really do try. I wanted to make that clear. I have made an effort to set up boundaries to make Sarah as comfortable as possible. I've tried so hard. It kind of sounds like somebody got in Sarah's ear and fed an insecurity. OP should take her out for a coffee or something and ask where this is coming from and tell her that their relationship is his priority, but that he needs to understand where this is coming from if she is going to end a friendship over it. OP needs to try to get her to tell him what's actually going on. OP can't promise to control his family. That's unreasonable and something he can only fail at. My guess is that this is a scapegoat for something else that's bothering Sarah. OP just needs to find out what it is. It's been a very eventful three days, and after all of the advice I was given on my last post, I thought I would share an update. This update is long, and not what I was hoping for, but what happened, has happened. I couldn't get a hold of Sarah for two days. She wouldn't answer my calls or my messages. I'd left her a voicemail asking her to come home or to meet me somewhere for coffee so we could talk together. I let her know I loved her and that she would always be first. I heard nothing back. She's never been like this. If we had issue, we would always talk it through. We have had a pact to never go to bed mad at one another, and we never have. But she didn't come home. She didn't even reply to me. At first, I thought she wanted some time to cool down, but it just kept getting later. I couldn't stop thinking she would walk back through the door. She didn't. I heard nothing from her. I could barely get any sleep. I texted her, explaining I'd do whatever I could to show her how much she means to me. I explained the only reason I saw Emma was at gatherings for mutual friends or family friends that she tagged along to, or when Sarah invited her to events herself. I told her she didn't have to do that, that I didn't want it or need it, I only wanted her. I said I wouldn't attend any get-togethers I knew Emma would attend at all. I also tried my best to explain that our families were very close before Emma and I got together and that I couldn't control who they were friends with. I did tell her we could talk though and that we would maybe come up with something together that would make her feel more comfortable. I let her know my family loves her. She didn't reply. It took everything I had to not keep calling her to see if she was okay, but I didn't want to upset her further. I read some comments saying it might, so I tried to listen. I still hadn't heard from her by the afternoon of the next day. I tried to call her again, but it rung out. I sent her another message telling her I just wanted to know if she was okay, and that if I didn't hear back from her soon, I would have to start calling her family or her friends. I didn't know if something had happened to her. This was so out of character. She's never done this. I was so worried. She texted me back straight away. I'm fine. I'm not coming home. That was it. I tried to call her. I knew she was right there. I figured she would pick up. I called, but she had turned her phone off. I didn't know what to do. I felt like my heart had been ripped out of my chest. I didn't know what I should be doing. I didn't know what would bring her home. I just wanted to talk. I wanted to make it better. I ended up going to my parents' house last night. They live close, about five minutes on a slow day. I was an absolute mess, and I didn't think I would cope by myself. It was about 8 p.m. when I went over. I hadn't heard from her again. I went to bed in the spare room. I was only asleep for a few hours when crap started to hit the fan. My phone was going off. It was Sarah. Where are you? Did you run back to her? I had no idea what she was talking about. I told her I was at my parents. I told her I was coming home. I begged her to please just stay. I was fumbling, trying to get myself dressed and find my keys. It was about 2 in the morning. I kept dropping everything. I wanted to be gone. I was halfway out the door, and that's when it happened. She pulled into the driveway and was absolutely livid when she got out of the car. She was screaming at me, yelling her head off, and no matter what I did, she wouldn't calm down. The street my parents live on is fairly echoey. She was loud. People started flicking their lights on, and our neighbors started to come out onto their porches. It was a crap show. My parents came outside too, and my mother started to try to talk to her. They have always gotten along well, and she wasn't responding to me no matter how much I tried. Sarah wasn't having it. She told me she knew what I had been doing behind her back, that her family knew, and I was lucky enough to be given a chance to cut my ties and move on after having an affair for so long. 
I have never cheated on her, let alone have an affair. I loved Sarah. I wanted to marry her and be with her. It didn't matter what I said. She wouldn't believe me. She wouldn't listen. She kept calling me every name under the sun. My mother asked her to please come inside to talk, that it was a misunderstanding, that I loved her, that they loved her, and we just needed to talk it through. Sarah started calling her a B, a terrible mother, a crappy person, told her that she knew what I was apparently doing, and even encouraged it, how sick she was for that. My mother tried to explain herself that this wasn't happening, and that's when Sarah slapped her, out of nowhere, full force. I went silent. My mother started to cry. Sarah started apologizing over and over. It was instant regret, or at least it looked that way. It didn't matter. I ended it right there. I told her to go, that the engagement was off, we were over, and that she needed to get her things from my house. She was crying, still apologizing. But you can't come back from that, what she did to my mother. She's never not shown all the love in the world to Sarah. And for her to do that to someone, let alone someone that means that much to me, was enough. I don't know why she wouldn't listen to me. I don't know why she chose to believe these other people over me. Why she wouldn't even talk. But it doesn't matter. I've never felt this empty. I gave three years of my life to someone who refused to even talk to me or believe me. I thought I knew her. I thought she was kind. How can you go so long with someone and not even know what they could be capable of? All I know at this point is that I plan to stay single for a while.